What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so we have a lot to cover from the last video. Last time we were talking about how this uh, invest uh, had basically no st uh, storm activity around it. Well, as you can look by the screen, it now does. And let's actually go ahead and show you what happened in the last uh, 90 fr uh, frames just to show you the context of this. Actually, no, let's go back to 100 frames because I'm gonna show you the whole thing. And okay, this even that doesn't go even that doesn't go back that far. So let's go back to 120 and just to show you the, everything that happened. So basically, this is where we were last time. This is where the storm activity was. And you can see it really wasn't that much, although we did start to see this stuff develop right here. And next thing you know, it starts to bl it starts blowing up and the center of circulation's right here. It starts to overtake the center of circulation and all that. And now it starts blowing up and then it kind of fizzles out a, a bit. Like the point I'm trying to make here is that there's a lot more storm activity now than there was at the last, uh, la at the last update I put out, which that changed the game quite a lot now. And I mean, honestly, I expected this to happen and everything, but it's, it's still something we need to pay attention to because the only thing that this thing was lacking was storm activity. Well, you got your storm activity right there, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and look at the NHC, see what they have to say about this. There is now a 40% chance of this happening in the next 48 hours of this thing developing, and a 70% chance in the next five days. So now there is a high chance of this thing developing, according to the NHC. So let's go ahead and talk about this. Shower and thunderstorm activity associated with a tropical wave located about 1,000 miles east-southeast of the Windward Islands continues to show signs of organization. Environmental conditions appear conducive for further development. And a tropical depression is likely to form during the early to or during the early to middle part of next week. This system is forecast to move westward to northwestward at 15 to 20 miles per hour over the tropical Atlantic, approach the Windward Islands on Tuesday, and move across the southeastern Caribbean Sea on Wednesday and Thursday. Interest in the Windward Islands should monitor the progress of this system. F uh, 40% in the next 48 hours, 70% in the next five days. So that's something we need to keep an eye on. This thing's moving at a rather quick pace, around 15 to 20 miles per hour. The average is around 13 miles per hour, so it is moving uh, a little faster than the average. We now have our current storm information, location eight, uh, location eight degree, 7.8 north, uh, 42.8 west. The, uh, the maximum winds have, were at 20. Now they're up to 25 knots, which is about 30 miles per hour. So this thing is strengthening. The pressure's down at 1,009 millibars. was 1,011. And the, maximum, and the radius of maximum winds is 90, so that you can tell this thing's starting to tighten up a bit and get more organized. So that's basically what we have. Let's, talk, let's actually talk about the wind shear because we need to get through this because the wind shear, like this system is going to be moving pretty much south, uh, south, pretty, south uh, pretty much between the Trinidad and Tobago and the Windward Islands. And depending on how, uh, depending on where it goes, like its most probable chance is like right in the middle. And we could only be seeing 20, uh, 20 to uh, twenty knots of uh, of wind shear at this point, and that's considered neutral territory right there. Which, like twenty knots of uh, of uh, twenty knots of wind shear, if this thing starts to develop, this thing develops before it hits the windward reaches the windward islands. It this thing could power through it, and after it passes through after it passes through that, and then it's gonna basically go into more favorable conditions. Heck, the conditions are getting more favorable by the uh, by the day, by the hour essentially. Like that wind shear is getting is getting lower and lower in the Caribbean Sea where it's at least going to be uh, developing. And this thing could continue to develop. This thing could, could, could start strengthening potentially at a very fast pace because the warm waters around it, we're looking at 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, about 83, 84 degree Fahrenheit, uh, Fahrenheit if you're in the United States of water of this thing just developing on. I will say the one thing at this point that's going to limit development is how deep those warm water water is. It's not like it, the the depth of it's not like the loop current or anything like that, where it's like 150 meters down. It's 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 around like it's around around 40 to 50 meters in the Caribbean Sea because it's a much larger area. So still decent. Uh, it's still a pretty decent depth and all that. But that's the only that's the one thing that's going to limit its development at all, essentially. So let's go ahead with that all over set aside. Let's go ahead and talk about the tracks and the intensity. The tracks still have this thing making landfall, mostly in Nicaragua. Although we do have the CTCI having this thing make landfall in Venezuela, which is uh, which I will say. 
that would be that's basically almost unheard of because tropical systems do not generally move that far to this um, are generally not this far to the south once they hit the Caribbean. And this thing hasn't making landfall in Venezuela and then into Costa Rica, which I will say is a certain po it, we can't rule it out, but it is unlikely at the it is unlikely at this time. So that's the tracks. So the intensity is a bit interesting. We do uh, the CTCI, the same model that has this thing making landfall. It kind of has it meandering as a tropical storm, uh, basically as it's making landfall in Venezuela and then to Costa Rica. So we need to pay attention to that. But still, uh, but still, a good amount of models have this thing as a hurricane. The H Wharf, which was at a tropical storm strength, has come back up to Category One hurricane strength. And this isn't even before it makes landfall in Central America. And the, basically the SHIP is really going off of a limb and making having this a major hurricane, which high doubt here, it's probably not going to be a major hurricane. It's still on the table if all the conditions are, are, are right and this thing continues to organize at the pace that it's been doing. But at this point, it's pretty unlikely. It's, not, it's improbable, but it's not impossible. But I will, I will say... Uh, I will say, like like I said, it's a little too early for me to say this, but if I had to give an estimate right now, the estimate I would give would be between 60 and 90 miles per hour at its peak. That's my estimate right now, but it, it, it is subject to change, and I feel like that's a little too early to be giving these kinds of estimates out. So this is what we're looking at right here. This is the HMON model, and we're going to be going through this, the GFS, the CMC, and HWARF uh, for you guys. This thing, as this thing kind of takes its time developing, and then it continues to uh, organize. Eventually, it becomes a tropical storm, and this actually develops before it hits the windward reaches the windward islands. Well, the windward islands could be seeing some tropical storm st uh, strength and all that. If you're in Trinidad, Tobago, the southern windward islands, you need to be paying attention to this because you guys have the possibility of getting at least tropical st uh, tropical storm force winds. So you guys need to uh, pay close attention to this. And eventually, if the H wharf is correct, this thing becomes a hurricane just uh, uh, just in between that gap. It actually makes landfall. Uh, it, it it actually makes landfall in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Tobago. and then it, it, it strengthens into a hurricane, continues its intensification, kind of st uh, stagnates a bit, and then it strengthens again. And before it even makes landfall in in, in Honduras, N Nicaragua, or Costa Rica, it's already down to a 978 millibars. The, this is already a Category 2 hurricane right here. So this is what the HMON is predicting. Let's go ahead and talk about the GF, uh, the GFS and, uh, real quickly. The GFS, uh, we have it right here. This thing, uh, the GFS, it actually has it moving way far down to the sa uh, south in making landfall in Venezuela. Not really even developing until afterward. But when it does develop, it does develop at a very fast pace. And makes landfall in northeast Nicar uh, northeast Nicaragua as a category as a category two hurricane, and then it basically after that just uh, goes over the over the uh, the uh, leaves Honduras. It goes back into the waters, but at that point it doesn't really even strengthen that much, and then it makes landfall in Belize. Now I will say if we take a look at the tracks. The majority of the models have this thing uh, making landfall in Nicaragua and just moving through Honduras and Guatemala. So I will say that is I will say that uh, that track is possible. The intensity is certainly possible if uh, those waters continue to warm up and all that. But we need to keep we need to keep a keen eye on this. Let's go ahead and take, talk about the CMC real quickly. Same situation, it develops. It actually develops into a tropical storm before it hits the Windward Islands, which that's becoming an increasing trend with a lot of these models, so we need to pay, pay close attention to this. This thing will end up uh, making land, either making landfall or going very close to Trinidad and Tobago as this thing strengthens, uh, strengthens into a strong tropical storm, and then eventually a hurricane. This thing is actually moves for, uh, closer to the coast of Venezuela. So Venezuela uh, could see some tropical storm force winds also from this as well. So we need to, everyone needs to keep an eye on this. This thing has not making landfall. It doesn't really affect it that much because it's over land for such a short time. And then it approaches uh, Nicaragua, makes landfall as potentially a, a high-end category one hurricane, 986 pressure. And then it moves into the Pacific Ocean after this. And kind of just uh, strengthens again uh, with the CMCs correct, which we'll have to keep a very close eye, uh, eye on that scenario as well as time goes on. And then, now, last but certainly not least, we need to talk about the H Wharf. The H Wharf is generally the most aggressive model out of these, but now the HMON and GFS are the more aggressive ones. And let me show you what I'm talking about with this. 
The H Wharf has this thing kind of meandering and starting to develop. It starts to organize at a, at a more quicker pace. It doesn't really fully develop until after it passes the, uh, the Windward Islands. In fact, it probably starts developing as it's passing through the Windwards as time goes on. It's actually, these models, I will say, are taking account for that weaker wind shear that we're seeing. And this thing's continuing to develop. Eventually strengthens into, uh, at this point, strengthens into a hurricane. We're basically not exactly the, uh, there yet. This, uh, the, this model isn't comp uh, exactly complete yet, so... Uh, complete yet, so at least from the looks of it, this looks like the H Wharf is predicting a Category 1 hurricane at this time. So yeah, I just wanted to make this video updating you guys in the situation. A hurricane is still possible. Uh, a hurricane isn't, I wouldn't say it's likely, but it is still possible. And everyone from the Windward Islands to Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, and Venezuela need to pay attention to this. But with that being said, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out and helps me make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather, which is what I hope I am doing with these videos. But with that being said, have a wonderful day. Stay safe.